Hi, this is a follow-on video for Revit for Quantities of Errors pre-processing. So I'm going to show you another few ways to pre-process our model um, to add a QSID or a Quantity Surveying Work Breakdown Structure. So in Revit, in the previous video or in the previous tutorial, we selected our wall or we selected our window or door, our object essentially, and we coded, um, in this case, a National Standard Billing Element an Irish work breakdown structure to the comments parameter in the identity data. We did that because it's quite simple. It shows up in the properties on that front page um, or the properties front page. I could have coded it in if I select edit type in the identity data parameters and there's a number of them, number of them here available. I could use keynote, I could use type comments, description, assembly code, maybe even the cost parameter. And in this case, for example, I could have typed in element 21, external walls. And that would have coded that object. Now I can also use the keynote itself. And the keynote is a text file um, housed in Revit. To access that keynote text file, I would click the three dots here. And I would select whatever my applicable keynote is. Now in this case, this is essentially a keynote for the SMM7, Standard Medical Measurement 7 in the UK. That's now actually has been replaced by the NRM2, New, Rule, New Rules of Measurement 2. Um, and it's defaulted in there when you download Revit 2019 or Revit 2018 as a keynote, Revit Keynote GBR. Now to access that keynote and to possibly change that keynote, what you can do is click Annotate, click Keynote, Keynote settings, go to where that keynote is housed, click browse. It's in your program files, um, actually in the UK directory of the Revit program files. And there it is there, essentially Revit Keynotes GBR. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna change it to make it more user defined to my jurisdiction, in this case, Ireland. So right click, copy. I'm gonna go now to folder I've saved my own um, desktop here keynotes and I'm going to paste it in here okay so if I open up that keynote I can see that it's essentially a text file with codes on the left and a description on the right so if I follow that same structure I can create a new one in this case Revit keynotes national standard billing elements and here we have our Irish elemental structure and our Irish descriptions per those elements so I'm going to click out of that folder. I'm going to go back to my keynote file. I'm going to select where I'd saved that particular keynote, National Standard Building Elements, and I'm going to click open. So that keynote has now been loaded into um, Revit. Click OK. I can view the keynote to see that it's all working OK. On the left hand side here, the actual keynote, the number, in this case it's a number and um, it's the description and then the actual description itself. So click OK, click OK, just to make sure that's going to add in. And I'm going to select my wall again, click Edit Type, back to my keynote, click the little three dots. There's my keynote text file. In this case, element 21, external walls, click OK, click OK. So see that that's coded in there there it is keynote external walls similar to what we did in the previous tutorial I'm going to scroll down this is the multi-category takeoff that I actually created in the previous uh, tutorial I'm going to double click that um, this is essentially where I coded it in the last tutorial in this case now I'm going to select insert in modify schedule quantities and I'm going to scroll down to my keynote parameter. There it is there. I'm going to bring that in. It's fine there, although I could move it up um, just in front of material name. Click OK. So my keynote has gone in there. And in fact, the walls that I've already coded has gone in. But I, as I showed you before, you can keynote with the schedule. So what's quite handy here is, for example, if I want to select that, that particular internal wall, which is the two and five block wall, 
select the little three dots, go to element 22, internal walls, partitions, click OK. Now it'll ask me, do I want to change all the applied elements to this type? And I do, click OK, and it's coded all those objects for internal walls. I can do the same, element 22, and it's a very quick way of coding with the schedule. And what it does essentially is it codes all those objects in that same elemental structure, whereas before I would have had to type them individually. So the keynote is a very handy way of putting a quantity surveying identification or a quantity surveying work breakdown structure using the keynote functionality or actually changing the default text keynote to a user defined one, inserting in your own user defined information, attaching that keynote to the keynote settings and utilizing the keynote functionality with the little three dots. Another way of coding the model is to use the assembly code. So instead of using the keynote or an available parameter, in this case we use comments. Um, I'm just going to go back to my 3D view, select one of my walls again, click edit type. So just below the keynote is um, an assembly code. If I populate an assembly code, the assembly description will get correspondingly um, populated based on what the description is of that code. So if I select the little three dots, just like I did with the keynote, um, Revit comes preloaded with the UniFormat. The UniFormat is the US elemental breakdown structure or cost codes for the United States, not applicable um, to this jurisdiction, to Ireland or the UK. Um, so I'm gonna change that to do so it's quite similar to what I did with Keynotes. I'm going to close out of it. Um, to find where the assembly code settings are, I click Manage. I click Additional Settings. Go down to the very end. I can't see it there because it's outside my screen. Click Assembly Codes. Oh, asked me to save the project. And again, this is very similar to the Keynote settings. Assembly code settings will come up. Click Browse. And there is my UniFormat classification in my program files in Revit 2019 or 2018, whatever Revit you're using. Um, again, I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to save it in a folder called assembly codes, but you can save it where you want. I'm gonna paste it in here and I'm just gonna change the name, let's say user defined codes. Double click it. There's my UniFormat text file with the UniFormat code description. Now, this level here, level one, level two, level three, assigns a kind of a hierarchy to the breakdown. That's a little bit dissimilar to keynotes, which don't have a hierarchy. So the overall hierarchy here is substructure. Within substructure, we got foundations. Within foundations, we got standard foundations. Within standard foundations, we got footings and pile caps, etc., etc. So if I select and delete that, I've got an opportunity to input my own user-defined codes in here. Okay, I don't need to save that. I've already uh, carried out a couple of examples of this. This is the new rules of measurement one in the UK. If I double click that, I can see I've got my codes, I've got my description, and I've got my levels or hierarchy. If I click on the international construction measurement standards, again, very similar, code, description, hierarchy. If you're having trouble constructing this text file, what can happen sometimes is essentially if the coding structure is not logical, if the levels aren't in the right order, or even if there's a tab in the wrong place, when you try and add this through your assembly code settings <coughs> or attach it to your assembly code settings, you could get an error and it won't accept it. An easy way to get this information in is to construct it first in an Excel spreadsheet. So here we have an Excel spreadsheet with the ICMS coding structure. In column A, the description is the code in column B. In column C is your levels and also include column D because that's essentially where you might house your Revit codes and um, the cross-reference against your ICMS codes. In this case, we don't have them um, and you don't need to include them 
but you do need to copy in that column, otherwise it won't work. So I'm gonna right click, copy that information. You can see that it'll probably go down to row 200 or so. And I'm going to control A, delete. I'm gonna paste it in here. And you can see now that even though it was an Excel, Excel spreadsheet constructed um, coding structure, it's come in here in the correct format with the code, the description, and the levels. So I'm gonna click out of that. I'm gonna go back to my <clears throat> assembly code or find my assembly code. I'm going to click where I saved my assembly codes and I'm gonna add the International Construction Measurement Standard. So that was one I produced myself. Click open. Okay, it's not at library locations, so it'll assign it a relative um, structure there. Just to see, it came in, it has. So there's the different levels of coding, one, two, and three, and then within one, we've got the different breakdown structure. Okay, so click OK. Now I've got an international construction measurement standard coding structure in my assembly code. I'm gonna go back to my schedule, and I'm gonna add in <coughs> My assembly code, so scroll down, assembly code in, and assembly description in, just to show you how the code works with the description. Maybe move them up in front of Keynote, and click OK. So now we have an assembly code and um, an assembly description. So maybe scroll down, in this case, my external wall completions, one of my windows, um, in the assembly code, I'm gonna click my little three dots. Up comes my new international construction measurement standards. It's in capital construction costs. Scroll down to architecture works, I believe, in this case. And um, external elevations external windows. So I'm gonna click that, click OK. Do I wanna sign that code? Yes, I do, to all similar objects. There we go there. That particular code has gone in in the assembly code. And its corresponding description, external windows, has gone into the assembly description. So essentially what I'll do there is I follow the same methodology, maybe internal walls and partitions, um, or here we go, it's an actual a timber partition, little three dots. Um, it is architecture works again, I believe. Non internal divisions, non structural internal walls. Click OK. And there we have coded an assembly code and an assembly description into our model.